Boxing Voice. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Garcia versus Falca conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, there will be an opportunity for live questions and comments. Instructions will be given at that time. As a reminder, this call is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference call over to our host, Kelly Swanson. Kelly, please go ahead. Thank you, operator. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's a very exciting call. We have um, six, no, five of the fighters participating uh, Saturday, August 9th at Barclays Center and on Showtime uh, on the call with us today. That includes Danny Garcia, Rod Selka, Lamont Peterson, Edgar Santana, Daniel Jacobs. And we are going to start the call with Daniel Jacobs. Uh, and then move into Santana and Peterson, and then wrap it up with Garcia and Salka. So uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Oscar De La Hoya, president and founder of Golden Boy Promotions, to make the introductions. Oscar? Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, yes, we are very excited. Uh, we we are getting closer um, to, uh, to the great night uh, of fights that we will be having at the Barclays Center in New York. Uh, in in Brooklyn, so we we uh, we are we are ready to go. Uh, as you know, the main event, Danny Garcia versus Brad Salka, which we, which will be a uh, ten round welterweight fight. Uh, the co-main event, Lamont Peterson versus Edgar Santana, will be a twelve round IBF Junior uh, welterweight championship, and uh, the fight will be. Uh, we'll be talking about now is uh, Daniel Jacobs versus Jared Fletcher. That'll be a 12-rounder for the WBA middleweight uh, world uh, title. Uh, this uh, this event is being taken place uh, August 9th uh, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, uh, promoted by Golden Boy Promotions. Uh, we are happy to be uh, in association with uh, the Bella Entertainment, uh, we are also uh, 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 happy to announce that uh, the Daniel Jacobs versus Jared Fletcher uh, is being promoted in association with Great Cohen Promotions. Thank you very much to our sponsors at Golden Boy Promotions, that is Corona and AT&T. Uh, there are uh, tickets still available. Um, we uh, priced them very uh, reasonable because we know that uh, – uh, um, having a packed house at the uh, at the Barclays Center, um, there's no experience like it. Uh, when you hear the uh, the thunderous crowd uh, going wild, uh, watching the great fights that we've had in the past, and obviously this is no exception. Um, the price prices start at twenty five dollars, uh, and we work our our way up uh, for ringside seats at two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, right now, at this moment, um, uh, I do uh, like to uh, would like to thank uh, uh, everyone for making this possible. Showtime to all the uh, to all the uh, sponsors uh, and all the participants. Uh, the first uh, gentleman that I will be introducing to you to the media, uh, they call him the Miracle Man, and the Miracle Man for a reason. Uh, he is from Brooklyn, New York. Um, we all know him for his uh, his dazzling footwork and his uh, speed and combination. He has a tremendous record of 27 and one and 24 knockouts. Um, perhaps I would I would have to say one of the most inspirational figures, um, not only in boxing but in any sport today. Um, he uh, he's uh, really excited to. Uh, be fighting for a world title in Brooklyn in front of his his his, uh, his, his hometown. Uh, we feel we feel excited about uh, uh, showcasing once again. Um, let me introduce to you uh, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel. Hey guys, how are you? All is well. I'm very excited. This is a Opportunity of a lifetime for me, um, you know, since being back, I've had five tremendous knockouts, and I plan to continue that streak. Although I'm not predicting a knockout, I do believe that uh, I'll be able to get the victory, 
of Fight Night, and it's going to be exciting. I'm very excited. Thank you very much, Daniel. And uh, we can now open it up for uh, questions from the from the media. Thank you. Great. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your tel- telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 if you'd like to ask a question. All right. We'll go for our first question in the queue coming from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Thank you very much. Hello, Daniel. Hey, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing very good. Thank you very much. Um, I heard uh, in Oscar's uh, introductory remarks called you a very inspirational figure, which I think is very true. And I'm wondering um, two things. First of all, when, when you were, you know, in the hospital and you didn't know if you were going to, uh, you know, forget about boxing, you didn't know if you were going to live, uh, could you ever have imagined that you'd be in a position uh, like you'll be next Saturday to not only fight in your hometown arena but also to uh, get in the ring and, and challenge for, for a belt? Uh, absolutely not. That was the furthest thing in my mind. Um, you know, I did I had hopes and aspirations of being one day being able to get back to the ring. And the Barclays Center, uh, you know, once I found out the Barclays Center were having fights, that was my biggest drive and my, my biggest motivation was to just participate in this, you know, in, the, in that first event, that inaugurational event. Mm-hmm. But to have this opportunity to have a world championship, you know, um, you know, a year and a half, two years later, I never would have thought this would be possible, let alone to have it in my backyard to be able to perform in front of my fans and my family who've been there during my struggle. You know, this is a this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I, I seriously, I, I really can't wait for fight night. It's going to be like a dream come true for me. I was going to ask you, uh, you know, should the thing should the fight go your way and uh, you know you're standing there and then they raise your hand and they hand you a belt? I mean, are you going to be able? You know, what's that going to be like for you? And do you think that you and, and members of your family are going to be able to contain the emotion after everything that you have been through in the last couple of years? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I, I I think about it all the time, and I think about you know I envision myself with my hand being raised, and of course you you know you envision um, the announcers and, and the new, and you know I, I get emotional just thinking about it. So you know for me that night and, and for my family, that will all be a, a night to remember if we have our hand raised in victory, and it, it'll be historical. So, you know it, I never would have dreamed of this opportunity to have and to fight for the WBA championship in my backyard. This is truly, truly an honor. Now, you did have one previous opportunity to fight for one of the world titles uh, back several years ago. It did not go your way. You got knocked out. Um, is there What's the difference between the Daniel Jacobs that perhaps was uh, a little green maybe to be fighting in that caliber of a fight at that moment compared to the, to the Daniel Jacobs of today, who even though you were ill and gone through a lot physically, uh, to be on on uh, track to get in the fight next Saturday. Well, I think I'm a lot wiser uh, as far as how I train and how I conduct my training camps, and um, the fact that I have to alter my diet post cancer to allow me to have a healthier uh, body and, and healthier lifestyle to be able to maintain a good training camp and maintain a good body to be able to perform at an elite level. At that time. Um, you know, I wouldn't say I took it for granted, but, you know, I I, I don't think I had the best training uh, for that particular fight. Uh, I'm a lot wiser. I'm a lot stronger. And my mental state is at an all-time high, you know, especially going through what I've went through. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm not invincible, but I also feel like, you know, that there's the only person that can stop me inside that ring is myself. So uh, I think I think um, yeah, the game pick of now opposed to back then is uh, 100 times better. I just have one other question for you, Daniel. Uh, I know this this fight between yourself and uh, and Fletcher is for the WBA title. Uh, you know, those of us who follow this know that Gennady Golovkin is also the WBA champion, the main WBA champion. Do you have any thoughts or opinions about the fact that uh, whoever wins the fight next Saturday uh, is going to get handed a belt that another guy really has a claim to? That there's going to be basically you're the secondary champion of that particular organization, or does that not make a difference because they're giving you a title? Hey, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, the champion is a champion. Um, That's the point, though. There's going to be two of them. You know, a secondary champion or or, or the first champion, it doesn't matter to me. I have an opportunity to fight for a world championship. It's not my job to make the belt. It's not my job to uh, put myself in a position to fight for the belt. It's just my job to really go in there and just be ready to fight whoever they put in front of me. And whatever title we get, I'm very grateful for it. You know, whether they call me a paper champion or a real champion, you know, I am a champion because, you know, each and 
every time I go inside that ring, I give it my all. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Very good. Thank you very much, Daniel. I wish you uh, sincere good luck next week. Thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate it. Great. And we'll go ahead and go with our next question coming from Lim Satterfield from the ring. Go ahead. Hey, Danny. Uh, congratulations from a fellow cancer survivor. Oh, there we go. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Hey, um, I got one simple question. What do you know? I mean, you're you're in a position where you're probably going to have a lot of people, obviously, in, in the Barclays Center rooting for you. Um, and I know you want to look spectacular. Um, what do you know about this guy, um, if anything? And, you know, how do you deal with his style, if you know anything about it? Uh, I really don't. Initially, I really didn't know too much about his style. So uh, I had to kind of like YouTube some of his fights just to get a, a gist of, you know, how he fights and his movements and things of that nature. And to me, it seems as if he's um, he's an in-and-out type of guy. You know, his, his, his nickname is Left Jab, and I can tell that he uses jabs a lot from looking at his fights. Uh, I know he plans on boxing and moving and using his combinations and going to full 12 rounds uh, come August 9th. Uh, but for the most part, myself as a champion, I feel like, you know, what a champion does is adjust to any style. I, you know, I've had 100, uh, 100, over 150 amateur fights, and I've fought all different types of styles from the national to international level. So I don't, I don't think that there's going to be anything in there that he can present that I haven't seen thus far. And if it is, it's just my job and my duty to go ahead and adjust and uh, do my best to get the victory. And I guess last question is uh, you've obviously performed. You talked about being in your own backyard. You've all obviously performed really well when you've been at Barclays Center. Um, how much pressure is there for you from a you know personal standpoint to continue that and to look good, given that you could be fighting a guy who could make the fight look ugly? Well, I just have to be a superhero that night. You know, um, I've trained, and, and, and uh, during my training, we, 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 we gave it our all, and we, we always put it in the back of my mind that I have to be a superhero, that I have to perform at an elite level. So that's already instilled in my mind. Um, there's no there's no overpressure. There's, there's um, you know, there's not a lot of pressure for me to go in there and try to knock the guy out. Um, I have the ability to box. I have the ability to move. And I do have the, the ability also to, if I hurt someone, I can get the job done and, and get him out of there. So, um, I'm just looking forward to just putting on a show, whether it's a, a full 12, uh, a full 12 rounds of just hand flying combinations, putting punches together, or if it's a devastating knockout. But I look forward to uh, going in there and giving my best, and I believe my best will give me the victory. Thanks a lot, Danny. Good luck in the fight. Thank you very much. All right, and just as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, that is star one on your telephone keypad. Again, star one if you'd like to ask a question. All right, our next question coming from Jake Donovan from BoxingScene.com. Hey, Daniel. Um, I just have one question. Um, given the loss that you had to Pirog a couple of years ago, I know it was disappointing at the time that, you know, you were ready for the world champ, or you thought you were ready for the world championship, but are you, like, a, a believer of destiny that, you know, all things happen for a reason and that this is the real story that needed to be told in your career? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm a believer of that 100%. You know, we may think that um, we have our own plans and we have, our, um, you know, our own goals set up for us, but... You know, it don't always go out the way we see, but we just got to stick to it. And um, I do feel like everything that I've been through, God is molding me to be uh, all that I could be possibly August 9th, and that's a world champion. So I do feel like that loss wasn't in vain, and I do feel like this is all molding me and setting me up to be uh, a superhero come, you know, come August 9th and, and, and furthermore there on. So uh, it's just an op opportunity of a lifetime, and, you know, I look forward to taking full advantage of it. Ah, uh, great. That's the only question I had. All my other questions are answered. Uh, just congratulations on overcoming everything you have, and best of luck next week. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, and our next question coming from Keith Idek from The Record. Hey, Danny. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Thank you. How much is it? Great, great. 
Uh, Danny, it seems there's been a lot of talk, uh, especially with Golovkin have fought him, having fought last weekend about who he's going to fight next. You know, all these pay-per-view fights people are mentioning and all these other things. Your name hasn't come up come up much, but you seem to be in more position to fight him if you're able to win this fight than anyone else. What are your thoughts on the, not that you want to overlook Fletcher at all, but what are your thoughts on the possibility of fighting him in the in the immediate future? I think it would be huge, you know. Um... But for me, how I look at it is I'll just be, you know, the champ. I'll just be being crowned champ. You know, it's an opportunity that I would love to have to fight him. But I also think that, you know, we he's already a superstar. You know, and I think I would I would I would have had the opportunity to be a superstar myself. So I think that if I can maybe get a couple of fights, maybe with Peter Quillen or someone like that, and then go up to a block, and that's something that I would look forward to doing. But initially, right after the win, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really in control of who I fight. But if I had it my way, I would probably give me a couple of fights just to solidify that spot and to secure my name and to be considered a, you know, a, a superstar of the division and a big threat in the division as well. Before we can go ahead and make that fight to where we both can get, uh, obviously, you know, what we deserve for, for, the, for that particular fight. What did you think of his performance Saturday night? Uh, I thought his performance was great. I mean, I think uh, it, it's kind of what I think what everyone else thinks. You know, uh, I think that the hype is real only for the sense that he's doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, whether or not I believe in the hype, you know, that's a different story. Uh, I see flaws in the game, uh, but the power is tremendous. And, you know, Mike Tyson used to say, you know, you can have all the game plan in the world until you get hit, and that changed your whole perspective. So you definitely have to be aware of uh, his power, but. You know, I do see a whole lot of flaws in his game as far as his uh, his defense and his, his ability just to be flat, or his inability to move his feet and, and being flat-footed. So uh, if there's a possibility that we can fight, I, I look forward to uh, exploring those things. I just have one last question for you, Danny. What, what do you know about Fletcher? What does he do well, especially for people who haven't really seen much of him? And what do you think of his ability and what he does well? Uh, I think the thing, uh, the key thing that he does well is uh, uses his jab, uh, and he moves very well. Uh, well, I wouldn't say very well. He moves uh, pretty good uh, with his combination, uh, but it's definitely something that I haven't seen before. And he's going to try to, from his words, he's going to try to um, box and, and use his movement, and you know, just I don't know how he needs to wear feet the ring is, but he's going to try to use all of it. <laughs> Great. Thanks for your time, Danny. Good luck next week. Thank you very much. Okay, that was our last question for you, Daniel. Thank you for taking the time to uh, join us today, and we will see you very awesome. soon. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you, Oscar. I'll see you guys soon. Okay. And we'll see you at the front. Yes, sir. Okay, now we're going to move to uh, Edgar Santana and Lamont Peterson, who are both on the phone and waiting to be introduced. Oscar? All right, thank you very much, Kelly, once again. The co-main event, uh, which, which we're really, really excited about, um, as we are with all the fights, uh, Lamont Peterson versus Edgar Santana, which will be a 12-round for the IBF uh, uh, Walter Waite uh, Championship. Uh, on the phone now, he uh, is from... New York uh, City, New York. He is unbeaten in uh, in eight of his uh, last nine bouts, um, um, and he is the current NABF champion. And obviously, he'll be getting his long-awaited uh, shot at a world title. Um, you know, he does hold wins over uh, Josecito Lopez, uh, which is a very, very tough, tough. Uh, uh, champion contender. Uh, he does hold wins over Grover Wiley um, uh, and also he does also hold wins over Luis Hernandez. So let me introduce to you now who will be fighting for a world title against Lamont Peterson on, uh, on uh, August 9th. Let me introduce to you a gentleman they call El Chamaco uh, from New York City, New York with a record of 29-4 and four and 20 big knockouts, Edgar and Chamaco Santana. Say a few words, Edgar. How you doing? Uh, how you doing, Oscar? And uh, all the... Good. 
How are you feeling? How are you uh, feeling? How's that going? I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. I mean, uh, I'm feeling hype. I mean, uh, you know what? Uh, I've been training hard, and uh, even before, even before I got the call, I've been in the gym. So I'm gonna be more than ready come August 9th. and uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna make sure uh, I give, I'm, I'm give the, the the fans the fight they they looking for, which is an exciting fight. And two fighters are uh, giving it their all, their all that night, you know? Okay, perfect. Thank you. And also, now let me introduce to you the champion. Hey, you he is the IBF Junior Walterweight World Champion. He hails out of Washington, D.C. And as we all know, he has also uh, um, a, a very inspirational um, um, and, and 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 difficult upbringing, inspirational because of where he comes from and and how he got to the top, of how he made it, um, um, uh, hard work and 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 perseverance. Um, he has tremendous tremendous wins against uh, against great fighters uh, uh, like Amir Khan and Kendall Holt. Um, he uh, you know he he's coming off some some. Some great wins, and on August 9th, he knows he has a very tough fight again uh, in front of him. Uh, but he's he's more than ready and 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 willing to shine uh, uh, in front of all the fans uh, at the Barclays Center. So let me introduce to you the champion with a record of 32 and one, uh, 32 and two. I'm sorry, with 16 knockouts out of Washington D.C. Lamont Peterson. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? All right, good, Sam. How are you feeling? How's training camp going? I'm feeling great. Uh, training camp is going well. Uh, just ready to fight August 9th. All right, my man. So let's open it up to the uh, media uh, for for questions. Thank you very much. All right, and if you would like to ask a question, again, that is star one on your telephone keypad. Star one, if you would like to ask a question. And we'll go with our first question in the queue, coming from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Thank you very much. Hello, Lamont. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Lamont, you know, you had your fight uh, in January against uh, Diary Jean. You looked really good in that fight. You know, one uh, uh, pretty clear decision in front of your hometown fans. Um, this is next up. I think a lot of people thought, though, that you might be fighting uh, uh, Danny Garcia, who's in the main event on uh, next Saturday. Um, what were your thoughts about that, that, that that's not the fight that you're fighting Santana instead? Well, uh, after I fought that night, you know, everyone who interview, interviewed me, I let them know, you know, I wanted to fight Danny Garcia next because that's what the fans wanted to see. And for me, you know, that's what, you know, if the fans want to see me fight someone, I'm going to push for that fight. So that's what I did. But uh, it just didn't happen. Um, at the end of the day, I'm going to end up fighting, you know, a good fight in, in Agatha, Montana, and uh, hopefully it can happen next time. Right. I, I was one of those people that was at that fight, and you did say that uh, mul multiple times that you were hopeful that your next fight uh, would be against Garcia because, like you said, you wanted the biggest fights uh, in your weight class. Um, did you push hard for it, and were you surprised that, that you couldn't have your your side uh, get that fight done? I don't know if it was, uh, you know, I don't know if it was you that – was not pushing forward, or maybe Danny's side, or just whatever happened. Uh, it's boxing, you know, it's fitness, <laughs> so you know everything got to make sense on that end. But uh, again, if, if I can win this fight, win or lose, you know that's the fight that I want that I want to happen. So uh, of course, you know, me winning the fight would make it, you know, more more pleasing because I leave with my title, and uh, hopefully he leave with his, and you know maybe it can happen because it's really the biggest fight you can make at the weight class. It's the fight that the fans want to see at the weight class, and uh, I'm 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 willing to do it. So, are you in a situation where if things go your way uh, August 9th, that you'll uh, finish up your fight with uh, Edgar and come out out to the ring and pay close attention to what Danny's doing in his fight? I'm not gonna really pay close attention to it. I pretty much know, you know, Danny's you know a top fighter. He can handle himself at that level. And uh, so, I, and I can handle myself at the level. So it won't be really like me focused on or him or anything like that. First thing I have to do is take care of my business and uh, 
And if I and if I do that, then you know I'll just be you know ready to celebrate and uh, relax and, and get ready for the next one. Okay, thank you for that, Lamont. Uh, hey, Edgar, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I have a question about that for you. Uh, you know, Lamont's giving you respect, says he's not looking past the fight, but says he also has a. Uh, you know, aspirations to uh, to take on Garcia and what would certainly be the biggest fight that could be uh, made in the weight class at this moment. Um, so what are your thoughts about getting the opportunity not only to, to win uh, a world title, which would most people would consider a big upset, but to also kind of wreck those plans? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, I'm happy to be the one. I mean, uh, I guess uh, they picked me out the bunch. I feel it's, uh, I feel I feel they, they, they committed a big mistake. And uh, I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be ready uh, to lay it all all on the line that day. All right, so, very good. Uh, Thank you. Hard. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there to fight. I'm gonna be there to fight. Ain't no doubt about that. All right, Edgar. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and our next question is coming from Nube Urgiles from El Diario of New York. Yeah. Uh, Buenas, esta pregunta es para Edgar. Tú, tú tienes la oportunidad de convertirte en un campeón mundial. ¿No te están dando mucho crédito de que puedes lograrlo? ¿Cuál es tu respuesta a esa gente que está dudando de tu talento? Bueno, en verdad que eso, eso no, no me... No, no me molesta, en verdad. Este, yo tengo que hacer mi, mi trabajo adentro, afuera y adentro del ring. Y yo soy el que voy a cambiar, voy a, voy a cambiar la, la, los, los pensamientos de, de, de la gente, en verdad, porque yo, yo, yo cuando gane esta pelea, yo cuando gane esta pelea, yo sé que todo el mundo va a estar, ok. Santana, ahora Santana es campeón, campeón del mundo y bueno yo me estoy preparando para ganar y you know, y, y va a ser un placer un placer para Puerto Rico y para mí y para para, para mi familia. Oh, Oscar, actually, Carlita's on the phone. Unless you want to do it, you want to translate for us? Thanks. Okay, I'll go ahead and take care. Of it. Okay, go. Ahead. Question was, the question was, um, you know, what, what do you say to all the uh, the critics who uh, are not giving you a, a, a chance uh, in, in this fight? And uh, and he he basically said, look, I mean, I'm, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I mean, uh, they, they made a big mistake in in, in choosing me, and uh, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And this is for my family, and this is for all Puerto Rico and all the Puerto Ricans. So uh, you know, they they made a big mistake. Okay, la segunda pregunta, ¿cómo te sientes de volver a pelear aquí en Nueva York eh, casi en dos años? Bueno, en verdad es un placer, le, le doy las gracias a Oscar de la Hoya, en verdad, y el equipo de él, este, y Showtime, porque en verdad, este, como tú dices, van dos años, y bueno, este, para, para, mí, para mí es un sueño. Para mí es un sueño imperial, este, no solo por un título, pero en frente de, de, de mi, toda mi gente. Yo sé que van, van a haber van a ver mucha gente que va, me, me vienen a apoyar este, y van a estar van a estar este, apoyándome. Y en verdad que eso eso para mí es un, este, es un sueño, es, es, es un sueño, en verdad. Gracias. How does it? How, he said, how does it feel uh, fighting in New York uh, uh, um, um, uh, in, for the first time in, in, in more than two years? And he said, look, it's a dream of mine. I want to thank Showtime. I want to thank Oscar. Yours truly. Um, I, I, I just, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And uh, it's just, a, it, it, it's a dream come true. So uh, he's going to give it his all, and uh, he's, he's, he's here to win. Yes. Great. And just as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, that is star one. All right, we'll go ahead with our next question in queue, coming from Lem Satterfield from the ring. Hey, Lamont, how you doing? 
I'm good. How you going? I'm blessed. Hey, listen, um, you know, after such a solid performance in front of a home crowd against Dierry Jean, um, is there anything that you personally want to demonstrate or feel that you need to demonstrate further to distance yourself from the loss to Lucas Matisse? No, not really. You know, this is, this is, that was one of those nights in Boston. It's Boston. I've been told y'all that from day one. So I haven't had nothing to prove in the Dierry John fight. have nothing to prove now. At the end of the day, we all fight it. We go out there, we train hard, we give it our best. And uh, we'll go out there to win. So that's what I'll do all this night. How, um, how rejuvenating was it to go back home after that loss and to put on that kind of performance and to, to bring that momentum into this fight? Well, uh, I was looking at myself as, as, as one of the best in the weight class. So, you know, uh, going out there getting the victory, you know, was, was, was a good thing. And I'm looking forward to another victory. Um, I know Agatine kind of is looking at himself as the underdog. I know a lot of the media is putting him as the underdog. But for me, I'm just going in there looking at it as, you know, it's another fight that I have to win. And um, I know he'll he'll give it his all. This is his first title fight. I know how it is to to, to finally get your shot. And uh, I, I know that you're going to prepare and, and be at your best. So I'm looking for a great fight. And uh, may the best man win. Come on, thanks a lot, and good luck. Uh-huh, thanks. Okay, that was our last fight for the – I mean, last fight. Oh, sorry. The, our last question for Lamont and Edgar. Thank you for joining us. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. And we are now going to move to the final fight and the main event of the August 9th show, Jimmy Garcia and Rod Salka. So I'm going to turn it back over to Oscar to make the introductions. Oscar? Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, this fight, the main event, which we uh, all have been waiting for, Danny Garcia versus Rod, Rod Salka, which will be a 10-rounder in the Walter Wade uh, uh, division. At this time, I would like to introduce to you. Um, he hails. He hails from uh, Bunola, Pennsylvania. He has a record of 19 and three and three knockouts. Um, they call him Lightning. Lightning for a reason. You know, it's great to. It's great to. It's great to introduce someone who is a a a, a proud uh, 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 United States. Air Force veteran, you know he uh, he is here to win uh, against Danny Garcia. He's coming off uh, he's coming off a, uh, a a huge upset against highly touted uh, Alexi uh, Collado, uh, which which he handed Collado his very first professional loss uh, April 18, and he expects to shock the world. He's coming prepared. He's, he's ready. Let me introduce to you from. Bunola, Pennsylvania, uh, Rod Salka. Rod, say a few words on how training camp was going. Hey, thanks, Oscar. Uh, training camp's going great. Uh, you know, we're up in uh, up in the mountains in California, PA. Been up here for about seven seven weeks. It'll be eight weeks time of the fight, and we're ready to rumble. Right. Thank you very much. And now let me introduce to you uh, the champion. Uh, he has a record of 28 and 0 with 16 knockouts, and uh, now in his third year as a world champion, uh, Danny has made five successful title defenses. Uh, you know, he won his first world title uh, in March of 2012 by dropping, uh, uh, by decisioning legendary Eric Morales uh, for the WBC 140-pound uh, title. He helped open a Barclay Center uh, um, uh, for business, with a one-punch knockout of, of, of Morales in their rematch, which was, uh, if you recall, a, a 2012 uh, knockout of the year candidate. Um, he holds a tremendous win uh, over, over champions, um, champions of, 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 of very high caliber uh, like Mauricio Herrera, uh, the amazing Lucas Matisse, which he uh, uh, put on a tremendous, tremendous performance. So here you have uh, a fighter who has been on the big stage, 
who is ready to perform, who is who is ready to to go out there um, and and once again uh, put on a tremendous tremendous show uh, for his for his tremendous uh, uh, fan base that that keeps growing every single day. So let me introduce to you. Um, let me introduce to you uh, first before I introduce the champion uh, to say a few words. Um, uh, he is uh, the father and trainer, uh, Angel Garcia. If, if, if he's on the call, is Angel on the call? Um, my dad, he ain't here right now, but um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he's trained by the great Angel Garcia. He introduced the champion, uh, Danny Swift Garcia. Danny. Hey, what's up, Oscar? How you doing? I um I want to thank everybody on this uh on this conference call. Um this camp is going tremendous. Um I've been sparring hundreds of rounds, um been running my miles every day. Um I'm very excited for this fight. I can't wait to be back at the Barclay Center to uh to give the fans my third performance at the Barclay Center. I had two great performances there already, uh with Eric Morales and, and Zab Judah. You know, I'm really motivated, and um, like I say, August 9th at the Barclay Center, it's um, it's the Danny Garcia purge. All right, thank you very much, and now we'll uh, open it up to uh, to questions uh, from the media. Thank you. All right, and get and again as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, that is star one on your telephone keypad. All right, we'll go ahead and go with our first question coming from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Hey, Danny, how are you today? Hey, Dan, what's up? How you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Um, this particular fight against Salka, you're coming off of, uh, you know, you beat Matisse last year, then you had the, the you know, a close win, but, uh, but, a, but a win nonetheless against Herrera. Uh, and, you know, most people consider you the real champion at 140 pounds. You're undefeated, one of the best young fighters in the world. And my question for you is, um, why is it that you're fighting uh, uh, Rod Salka, who is not rated in the wel junior welterweight division, um, not that highly, you know, a hard-working fighter? I was there when he, when he fought Canelo's brother in San Antonio, uh, fight a lot of people thought that he won, but he's not uh, a highly rated fighter even in the lightweight division. Why, why is the best fighter in the 140-pound division fighting a fighter with, uh, with that type of resume? Um, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, I don't pick my opponents. My manager Al Heyman does, and I never go against him. He picked the Khan fight, he picked the Matisse fight, he picked the Zab Judah fight, he picked the uh, Herrera fight, he picked all my fights. So I never question him um, about his decisions. I just accept the fight, and my job is to to train hard and go in there August ninth and give the people at the Barclay Center a great a great performance and a, and a good fight. Um, at the end of the day. You know, um, my style brings out the best of my opponents, so I'm looking forward to an action-packed fight August 9th, and um, I can't wait. Would your preference have been to fight uh, another top contender, or uh, as was discussed, and we talked about this with Lamont Peterson on his portion of the call, uh, to be fighting a unification fight with Lamont, a fight that you know he said he wanted in January after his victory against Gene. Um, I know you've never really backed off from fighting anybody. You know, like you said, all the guys you did fight. Um, was that a fight that you would prefer to have? Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's what it's what I want because I can say what I want, but you know, um, I'd like to know what you want. I mean, I understand that Al is the manager and he wills. Yeah, right now, right now, I got I got August ninth, so I can't I can't look past anybody. As same way, Lamont Peterson, he can't look past uh, he can't look past Edgar Santana. So at the end of the day, you know, we both got to get these victories, and that's what they want at the end of the year or the beginning of the next year. Then we could do it a unification bout. Uh, what's your plan of attack against Salka, who is uh, does not have a lot of experience against the top level fighters? You know, I got to go in there and, and be smart. Um, I can't make no mistakes. Um, I got to stay sharp. I got to stay composed. I got to work behind my jab. I got to move my head, and I got to go in there and um, and seek and destroy and um, and look like a champion. All right, very good, Danny. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, and we'll move on to our next question coming from Lem Satterfield from the Ring. Hey, Danny, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm blessed. Well, um, as as Dan referenced, given that your past eight opponents were either champions or A-list guys like Pereira, and given the close call 
that you had against uh, Guerrero and the notion that Rod Salka is a step down from those past eight opponents. Is there a need or desire, as you kind of just referenced, to win by knockout, uh, to win spectacularly, um, you know, perhaps similarly as the way you beat Morales in the rematch? Um, I think it's very important for me to go out there and um, and look good August 9th. Um, you know, I got to go in there and look like a champion. Um, I'm playing at the Barclays Center. I love the atmosphere there. It's a beautiful arena. Um, I'm very motivated. Um, I did everything right this camp. Um, I have made a lot of mistakes, you know, sparring and stuff. So I'm looking good. I'm looking sharp. And come August 9th is going to be another epic performance, and I'm going to go in there and, and try to get my fans a knockout. So you are trying to go for I mean, would you feel – I'll just say it. Would you feel – given the competition you faced, if this guy and kind of the criticism that has been leveled against this fight, if he Yeah, goes- I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the media's problem. At the end of the day, you know, he got two hands, I got two hands, and we're going to fight. It's a fight. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. He got two hands, I got two hands, and it's going to be a fight. Um, it don't matter who they put in there. So, you know, um, it's going to be an epic performance, uh, August 9th. Um, Two guys in there going in there and giving their all, and it's going to be a great fight. Danny, thanks a lot. Rod, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Rod. Um, you know, you you have said you know you you're not really worried about what the media writes, and you know you're you're ready for this fight. Um, will you will you feel victorious? I mean, obviously you you want to win the fight, but if you go the distance and you give a good fight, you know what does that do for your career? let alone winning. I don't care what that would do. I don't have any uh, expectations other than coming in there and winning the fight. Uh, having having any other thoughts about that only distracts from the goal, and the goal is to go in there and win the fight. You know what I mean? So that's, a, that's I'm coming August 9th. I'm coming, I'm coming to win. Do you feel that there's any uh, extra pressure on, on Danny? And uh, if, if so, is that something that you can take advantage of? Um, honestly, at this level, I don't really feel like anybody listens to any. And none of the fighters are really taking any kind of creed in any any of that stuff. Like he says, at the end of the day, we're two guys with two hands, and we're going to go in there and we're going to fight. Um, it really doesn't matter what anybody's saying because that's the fact. So I, I don't think that they're – absolutely not. I don't think there's any more pressure. You know what I mean? I I mean, we don't even feel pressure going in there to fight regardless. It's what we do. It's what we do every day. It's what we train to do. It's what we train to do for years. But at the end of the day, we're going in there and we're doing our job. So there really is no pressure there. It's just a, it's just a great atmosphere. It's going to be an awesome night. And we're going to go in there and handle our business. And we're going to get it on August 9th. Okay, thanks a lot. Oscar, one question for you. Yes. In the event that both um, Danny Garcia and uh, Lamont are victorious, is that a fight, as Danny referenced, uh, that you would push for uh, for the end of the year? Well, I mean, it, it's a fight that has been talked about, but there's nothing that we can push for now because, you know, Danny Garcia and Salka, you know, as as much as much as this fight has been uh, written about and talked about, um, these, these are two live. Uh, 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 willing, uh, hardworking, and, and dedicated fighters that that are that, that are going to give it their all uh, August 9th. So so there's really nothing to talk about um, 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 uh, looking ahead. Uh, um, um, you know we 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 feel that you know making this card, uh, putting it together, um, you know uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of a, a lot of shockers, a lot of surprises, a lot of great performances. I mean, we're going to get it all August 9th. I mean, we have we have fighters uh, uh um that are that are that have inspirational stories, fighters that that are, that have worked from the bottom all the way up uh like Danny Garcia. I mean, you know, Salka who is who is uh you know, uh, 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 uh served our country. I mean, we we have we have everything on this card and so there's 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 nothing that we can really talk about. Uh, you know, concerning the main event, uh, um, um, you know, all we can talk about is uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens August 9th because we don't know what's going to happen. All right, Oscar, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.
Thank you. Again, one more reminder to ask a question that is star one on your telephone keypad. All right, and we'll go ahead and go with our next question coming from Jeffrey Freeman from Knockout Digest. Hi, that's uh, actually that's KO Digest. Thank you for putting me on the call. Uh, my first question is for Danny. Uh, Danny, boxing is the uh, what have you done for me lately sport. Uh, you've lost a lot of pound for pound momentum since the disputed decision win against Herrera in Puerto Rico and now this non titled debacle with Salka. How do you get that momentum back? I mean, I, I already got momentum. Um, you know, I've been training hard. I'm 20, you know, I don't have no losses. And um, I'm always motivated. Um, I feel like I got great momentum now. I just got to go in there on August 9th and, and perform and, and get the W. And that's all that matters. Other than what, you know, ratings and rankings and what the people think, it doesn't matter because good media is good media and bad media is still good media. As long as people are paying attention, it makes me relevant. And we're going to go in there and perform. I'm going to go in there August 9th and get the fans a great fight. You refer to the controversy as the media's problem. Is that really the paying fans problem? What did you mean by that? Uh, if my fans are always going to be my fans regardless. You know, um, Danny Garcia fans support what he does regardless. Um, you know, for the other people, I can't talk for other people. But my fans back me up and they love me no matter what. What is your gripe with the media's assessment of this fight? You know, I really don't I don't read articles and stuff like that. But, you know, um, people can say what they want to say. Um, but, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication to be a world champion and to face pound for pound and tough fighters and beat them. So, you know, if you if you don't if you don't if you don't like it, you still got to respect it because at the end of the day, you know, it takes a lot of hard work to be an athlete and it takes an extra amount of work to be a world champion. Right on. Is uh, Rod Salka still on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Hi Rod, what do you think about the fact that this fight was downgraded to non-title status? You know, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, I'd rather have been for the titles, but there's, you know, what am I going to do? Is beating Garcia non-title at welterweight just as good for you as beating him for the title at 40? At one point, I guess what I'm asking you is, what do you have to what do you have to gain aside from your purse? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm fighting the best fighter at 140 pounds in the world. I mean, the titles are, are what they are, but I mean, does it? Like, would I rather fight some guy nobody ever heard of for a title, or would I rather fight some guy everybody knows who he is for no title? You know what I mean? At the end of the, at the end, like, it doesn't even, that, that doesn't even, why wouldn't I want to fight Danny Garcia? He's the best guy out there. It's the biggest fight you could possibly get at 140 pounds. So it doesn't bother. I, I, I really don't, I really don't care if I can put a belt on at the end of it. I mean, I can, I can take my purse and go a thousand of those made if I wanted to. You know what I mean? What, what is that? Okay, very good. Good luck to uh, both fighters on August 9th. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and our next question coming from Jose Sanchez, Nuevo Via. Yes, hello, Danny. Uh, a quick question. Your yeah. best performance seems to come when you're the underdog or when you're perceived as the underdog. Uh, even though you're not the underdog here, does that criticism regarding your left side motivate you into that, like, underdog mind, mindset that, that that has served you so well in the past? Um, you know, um, my mindset is, you know, to go in there and win, and um, that's, how I pro that's how I approached every one of my fights. Um, even when I was an underdog against Khan and I was an uh, underdog against Matisse, I couldn't understand how I was an underdog, but, you know, the, the media and the people are always going to choose the fighter with more... Um, with more uh you know uh fame and more publicity that's what that's what that's what um that's what makes the underdog when when you're fighting somebody who got you know probably a bigger name than you in the sport but you know i never i never um had in my mind that I was the underdog so you know i I just train hard for the occasion and um and and, and when it's spectacular for him yes. one last question Manny. now you know a week or so before the fight. How are those two extra pounds you're having in this fight uh, are benefiting you? Do you feel the difference between 140 and, and the way you're gonna do for this fight? Yeah, um, I feel I feel I feel a lot energized. Um, usually at this time, um, when I'm making out when I gotta be 140, I feel a little bit weak um, from losing the weight and maintaining, you know, skipping meals and stuff like that. 
But um, I'm able to walk around a little bit more comfortable. You know, I still got to work hard to make the weight. I still got to sacrifice. But those, those two pounds, you know, as anybody know in boxing, if you're a fighter, two pounds make a big difference. And um, it's helping me. Uh, I'm still strong sparring, and I'm, I, I still I still feel strong working out. So um, it's going to be a big difference. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. All right, and again, that is star one if you'd like to ask a question. And we'll go to our next question in the queue, coming from Jake Donovan from BoxingScene.com. Hey, uh, Rod, when you were fighting um, Alexei Collado, was it in your mind at the time that you would be going on to fight the very best fighter in the world at 140 pounds? And the reason I ask that is because you've been up and down in weight. That fight took place uh, closer to the lightweight limit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I mean... I'll I wouldn't have thought that I'd be fighting, you know, Danny Garcia in my next fight. But heck, when I was uh, promoting my own shows, I didn't know who I was going to fight in my next fight. You know what I mean? It's it's just the nature of the beast. You, you never know. It might be a big fight, or a, heck, you might be fighting. I might have been fighting off TV or, or on on another TV network somewhere else. Like, you, you can't predict these things in boxing. So I mean, I'm I'm happy I did get it. I'm happy that fight went well. I did well, and I'm happy to get the opportunity. Okay. Um, as I said, you've been up and down yeah. on the scales. Uh, what is your uh, preferred weight, and how is it for you yeah, to train for a 142 pound fight? Um, you know, like like he was saying, it's it's um, I can make 35. You know what I mean? I can make it. I could get down. Heck, I could get down whatever I need to get down to. Right. That's my job. But it's definitely a lot more comfortable for me. 140 pounds is definitely you know I don't want to say easy because you know you, you are still. I mean, you still got to. You're killing yourself in the gym every day to get not only ready for the fight and not only ready for a war, but to get down the weight and, and to make sure your body is, you know, as finely tuned as it can be and you're sacrificing as little as possible to get down to those weights. I mean, I still got to do that to get to 40. Cool. All right. Thanks, Rod. And, um, Oscar, I have a question for you. Um, I know, you know, Danny, he said that, oh, Al, Al chooses who he fights, but you're the promoter. You get, you know, I'd imagine you have to have some say. How did this card come about as opposed to the desired matchup between Garcia and um and Peterson? Well look, I mean we, we obviously we obviously um we obviously um uh, did did want to, to stage um, the, the fight that 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 all the media uh, uh you know uh um was was suggesting, you know, Peterson versus Garcia but but it, it wasn't a fight. It, it wasn't a fight that was available. It just wasn't available. We 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 it 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 it, it, it was it couldn't be made. And so uh, so so Salk obviously uh, he's he's well deserving. He has a you know a rocky like story you know and uh, and so we we put on we put on a a, a tremendous card from top to bottom uh, with with Daniel Jacobs and 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 you know with Peterson and and. And, and and with all these big name fighters, so uh, you know this is a perfect fit for the Barclays Center, and um, you know it's like Danny Garcia said, this is this is uh, you have two fighters that are are, are gonna are gonna be ready uh, come August 9th, and uh, and uh, you know the leather will be flying, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tremendous show. Okay, thank you, Oscar, and uh, Danny, you still on the call? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, I just have one question for you. Uh, as you mentioned, there's going to be a third fight at uh, Barclays, and I know you're trying to tap into the Puerto audience in New York. You had uh, your debut in Puerto Rico. Um, is there any chance that you bring the title home to Philadelphia one day? Uh, that's always a dream of mine um, to fight in Philadelphia. You know, uh, on a world title. I don't think that, I don't think there's been a world title fight here in you know quite a amount of years. Um, but um, you know, it wasn't available at this timing. We tried. It wasn't available. A lot of the venues were booked for the time. Uh, uh, the fight that they were trying to schedule in, the, in that time period. So we had it. We went with the Barclays Center, and you know the Barclays Center is a, it's a great place. Um, I love it. It, feel, it feels at home to me. Um, it's, a, it's a good place for the people in Philadelphia. They want to go out. They feel like they want to get out the city. They just take a two-hour drive to New York. You know, watch boxing, and you know, go out in New York after the fight. So. You know, it's 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 a good getaway for the people in Philadelphia, and um, a lot of people from Philly are gonna be there, and it's gonna be like I'm fighting in Philly anyway. That actually answers my very next question, so I'm gonna end it. Uh, best of luck to everyone next weekend. All right. 
All right, and our last question is coming from Juan Marshall from Pro-Am Fight Talk. Yeah, this question is for uh, Oscar. Yeah. You there? Okay. Um, with, with not looking past August 9th, because Danny Garcia is could be included in this question, but since Floyd has like a couple of fights left under his belt to become that, that he's that pay-per-view guy right now, is boxing still are they are they looking for that next pay per view fighter? No, look, we're 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 focusing on the job at hand. Uh, Floyd Mayweather has uh, uh, Maidana in front in front of him uh, in September. Uh, Danny Garcia has uh, Salka in front of him uh, August ninth. So, you know, uh, it, it it it's really difficult um, um, now in these days to look ahead and plan for the future, uh, you know, on all these fights, that, that, that these mythical fights that, that everybody wants to watch or, or, or um, um, you know, because we're, 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 experiencing, we're experiencing something that, 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 that hasn't been experienced in a long time in boxing. There's a lot of upsets in, in boxing today. There's a lot of these. There's a lot of these fights where, where, where people don't expect um, um, an, an opponent to win because uh, because of the champion and because of the uh, the stature of of of, 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 of the champion. Um, you know, we, we we must pay attention to the fights at hand uh, because you never know what's going to happen in boxing. You know, I mean, uh, um, um, you know, and this is this is a, a perfect a perfect indication. Uh, uh, that that we must pay attention at the job at hand, August 9th, because look, fighters they, they don't know what's going to happen. They train hard, and they 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 take care of business, uh, you know, and they work hard, and 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 but you never know what's going to happen. One punch can turn everything around, and uh, so so it's hard to it's hard to to uh, to look ahead and make plans. Um, so, so let's pay attention to August 9th, and then obviously we'll move forward from there. Yeah, and part, part two uh, to that. Also, like with, with the era, the way boxing has been, just like you said, it's been a lot of surprises and everything. Is that one reason why a lot of fighters now, because back like when Sugar Ray Leonard, and of course when, in your era when you fought, it was like like all the champions and top contenders fought against each other. Like they was considered the best against the best. And is that the one reason why, like, promoters and managers don't make those type of fights and put those type of fights together? Because a lot of fans, that's, what they, that's exactly what they want to see. They want to see the top contenders, want to, you know, fight each other in the ring at, one, you know, at, at, at some point in time. Absolutely. And, and that's what we've been seeing um, um, for, for, uh, for a few years now. Um, you know, we've been seeing the best fight the best. And um, this is a great this is a great opportunity uh, uh, for everyone who's going to be watching. Um, you know, this this is this is this is an opportunity, an opportunity for for every fighter. Yeah, go on ahead. The you can bring. So, uh, so we're 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 happy to be uh, promoting this event, and uh, you know we will be seeing yeah. a lot of great great champions, but we'll, we will also be seeing a lot of a lot of surprises and maybe a lot of upsets. Yeah. Okay. This okay thank you. Candy. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, that's our last uh, question, everybody. We will be sending out the uh, fight week uh, schedule for next week. We have a lot of great um, opportunities, including workout with the fighters, press conference, and weigh-in. So please look in your inboxes for that schedule. We look forward to receiving more and more of your coverage. Uh, Oscar, if you want to close us out, that would be great. Yes, thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you very much to all the press. Thank you. We're looking forward to this tremendous, uh, uh, great part. Like I said, we we uh, we uh, we are a lot of efforts, a lot of upsets, a lot of uh, uh, great performances. Um, um, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, thank you, Showtime, and uh, we will see you at the Barclays Center August night. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay, I've already finished. Thank you, and that will conclude our call for the day. The
Boxing Voice.